Hello everyone and welcome. In an earlier video tutorial we considered a problem of passing by value versus passing by reference from the point of view of primitive data types and this is a common problem that many beginners face. Well in this video we're going to continue on with that theme and consider the more difficult problem of passing by value versus passing by reference from the point of view of objects and this is a lot more challenging. So let us begin. Let us quickly recall what is passing by value versus passing by reference? Well, when an argument, that is, a variable, an object, or an array, is passed to a method, the question is, is the argument passed by value or passed by reference? Now, when we say passed by value, what we mean is, is the method given a copy of the value stored by the argument and not the original argument? So passing by value means passing a copy of the argument and not the original argument. In contrast, to pass by reference means to pass a reference to the original object or the original variable, i.e. you're passing the address in memory of your original variable. So that's the difference. Pass by value is copy. Pass by reference means passing the address in memory of your original variable. Now, Java passes everything by value. And when we say everything, we mean everything. That means all primitive data types, such as ints, floats, double, cars, bytes, etc., all objects, all arrays, everything is passed by value and never by reference. Now, we've seen the implications of this when dealing with primitive data types in our earlier video. In this video, we're going to look at the implications of this using objects, and it's a lot more complicated. In fact, we will see it has the appearance of passing by reference. But it's, it's important to understand exactly how it works and underneath, so to speak, the engine, I'm going to show you via illustrations how memory is managed when passing objects by value. Okay, so we'll begin with a simple example now. I'm going to create a simple class to describe a person. So let's begin. So I'm going to call the class, well, it makes sense to call it person. Um, it's going to have two attributes. Um, the name of the person and the person's age. So it's really simple, really straightforward. So I'm going to quickly declare a constructor that receives the two parameters, name and age. Um, so we just want to initialize. So this.age is equal to age and this.name is equal to, excuse me, name. Okay. So basically what we're saying is here, this name here refers to the parameter and this dot name refers to the name associated with this instance. So the name here is assigned the value of the parameter name. Okay, and likewise at age. Okay, so we're going to we want to display the value of this. So I'm going to create my own toString method. So we're going to override the default toString method as part of the object class. So let's do that now. So it's a very simple method. It's simply going to return, um, we're going to return the name. So let's write name colon, um, name followed by age. Okay, that should do it. And there's one more method I want to write, and that's a change details methods. So a change detail method will allow me to demonstrate when I change the underlying object data as opposed to the object references. We'll see what I, you'll see an example of what I mean when I demo the example shortly. But just let me write the method first. So change details, we'll call it. Um, again, it takes two parameters, string name and int age. So in fact, this method is pretty much identical to the constructor. So let me put that there. Okay, um, let me save that method. And let me just verify that I compiled successfully so there's no typos. Perfect. So far, so good. I'm now going to create another class called Person Demo, which will be used to demonstrate the de declaration and initialization of a person object, and then show you exactly how Java passes objects by value and not by reference, and show you the implications of what that means in practice. So, class Person Demo. Um, straightforward class. We're going to invoke this class from the Java virtual machine, which means I'm going to have to type a public static void main method. So write our method header, 
Very good. Now I want to instantiate an object, uh, a person object. So we'll call it person one. So person, person one is equal to new person. Oh, let's call him John. Uh, the name is John and the age is 21 for simplicity. Okay. So now I'm actually, let me save this because it'll be color coded when I save it. Um, person demo at a previous version earlier on, so that's fine. So that's, I have one person object. This is the declaration of a person object. And then this is the instantiation, okay? And um, I'll describe exactly what that means visually um, after I've written the program. So I'll declare a second person, sorry, second person object, person, I'll call it person two, very imaginative. This time, I'll just declare it, but I won't initialize it. Now I'm going to set person two equal to the value of person one. Okay, just bear with me. I'll write the program, then I'll explain it. Then I'm going to say person two dot change details. So I'm going to change the details of the person two object to be Mary 20, uh, 30 years of age. Why not? And lastly, I'm going to print out now the details of person one. So let's have a look at this. Let's take a moment now and see what's happened here. So I declared a person one object and I've initialized it to John. I then declared a person two object, but I didn't initialize it. Then I assigned a person two object to have the same value as person one. And this is where it gets tricky. What do I mean by same value? Hmm, I don't know. Well, well, I do know, but I'll explain to you in a moment. So when we call person two dot change details, it's going to change the, the details of person two, and then I print out the details of person one. So the question is, will it print out John 21, or will it print out Mary 30? Take a moment to think about it. You can pause the video and try and work it out yourself before I explain the answer to you. Okay, so I'm now going to explain and illustrate step by step exactly what happens when we run this program. So, first of all, we have person, person one. Now, in fact, just imagine I wrote that without this line here. So, person, person one, just like that. What is happening? Okay, what happens in this case is, is that the Java Virtual Machine creates an object reference, which I illustrate with this box, that is capable of storing the address in memory of a person object. So if the statement was written just like this, this is our address in memory, our object reference, should I say, capable of storing the address in memory of a person object, and it labels it with the mnemonic person1, i.e. the name of the variable. In this case, our variable is an object reference. Now, it hasn't been initialized, so its default value is null. That's what would happen if this is what we wrote. But actually, that's not what we had. Let me put back what we had. We had this. So what actually happens is, it goes off. Sorry, let me just cut and paste this from my other window. Okay. What it does is, it's create a variable, an object reference, capable of storing the address and memory of an object. It then reads on the right hand side, this is this expression, it sees the new keyword. So the Java virtual machine, when it sees the new keyword, it knows, it says, I have to grab a blob of memory. Now, a blob of memory is not very technical. What exactly is a blob? Well, the operating system says, I don't know what a blob is. And the Java virtual machine says, don't worry, I don't know what it is either, but I'm gonna pass you the constructor called person and it knows exactly how much memory it needs. So it will tell you how much memory it needs, you give it whatever it asks for, and then you return to me the address in memory of that blob in memory, okay? So you see it here, the blob of memory is initialized with John and 21, and let's assume the address of this blob in memory is 1234, then the value 1234 is stored in the object reference called person1. That is exactly what happens and just to visually demonstrate it. So effectively, this is what we have. We have a, a variable, an object reference, that contains the address in memory of the person object that we call person1. So that's what happens. That is the state 
of our program after the very first statement is executed. So moving on to the next line, person P2. When this statement is executed, person sorry, person two, when this statement is executed, what is the state of our the Java virtual machine? So let me demonstrate here. So I just will just copy this here. So this is now called person two. And after this line is executed, this is what we have. We have declared an object reference, a variable that is an object reference, but we haven't initialized it. So by default, it is initialized to the value of null. So that's what happens after this statement is executed. Now, moving on to the third line, person two is equal to person one. Now, this is key. So person two is an object reference, and it's assigned the value of person one, of the object reference, person one. And this is crucial. It's assigned the value of the object reference and not the object data. So person two is assigned a value that's in the, here. So it's assigned one, two, three, four. So person two now contains the exact same address in memory as person one. So in fact, person two is now pointing to the same object data as person one. And this is key. Okay, so person one is equal to, person two is equal to person one. This is exactly what happens after this line is executed. So moving on, person two dot change details Mary 30. So person two, so change details, which means we're now invoking the method associated with the object. So that's the method that will be part of this object here. And we're changing the details to be Mary and 30. So now we can see that person two is pointing to this object that's Mary 30. So that's the state of our Java virtual machine after this line is run. Now we say print out system that out the print line person one. And as you can see, person one is pointing to the exact same object data as person two. So when we print out person one, we won't get what we initialize person one to be, John 21. What will actually print be printed out is Mary 30. So let me demonstrate that now. Let me compile it, make sure there's no typos, and run it. And as you can see, printing out person one prints out Mary age 30. So this is crucial. So do you see how, although we haven't passed this person one here as passed to this method print line, we haven't changed person one. We've only changed person two. Yet when we print out person one, the object data is changed. And the object data is changed because we created a new object called person two, an object reference, and we assigned the value of person two to be the value of person one, which means we assigned the value of the object reference, which is the address in memory of person one that was assigned to person two, hence the same. So I hope that visually demonstrates to you the difference between passing by value versus passing by reference. Well, recall that Java always passes by value, so I shouldn't say that. I, have, I can't compare passing by reference in Java because it doesn't exist. But as you can see, the effect of passing by value here is almost identical to what you would expect to happen when passing by reference. Because when we change the object data associated with person two, it also changed the object data associated with person one. Because they both point to the same object in memory. So, in summary, Java always passes by value and never by reference. And by passing by value, we mean it makes a copy of the variable and doesn't point to the original variable itself. But in this case, we're making a copy of the object reference, one, two, three, four. A copy of this is, put into, is assigned to person two, not your original one, two, three, four, it's a copy. But precisely because these values are object references, that are actually memory addresses pointing to an object data, and they're the same memory address, therefore they both point to the exact same object. Hence, if we modify 
the object associated with person2 by invoking a method, for example, change details, by definition, it modifies the details of the person1 object as well, even though we haven't explicitly done that. So this is where it gets complicated. So I'd, hopefully I've illustrated to you the difference between passing by value and passing by reference. Now I know I didn't actually use methods in this case because I wanted to make it as simple as possible. I just used a simple assignment rather than invoking methods and performing this assignment within a method. But the exact same principle applies whether you're using methods or if you don't. So I tried to keep the example and the illustration as simple as possible, and I hope it was useful and helpful. So if you have any questions or any feedback, please leave comments uh, below the video. Thank you very much for watching.